Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with modern-day star jazz pianist Monica Herzig. She talked about her latest project, She Rose, that features the world's leading female jazz instrumentalists like Lenny Stern and Ingrid Jensen, along with many others. She also talked about her life. Together with her husband, she arrived in the United States with a one-way ticket and a suitcase of belongings along with one guitar in August of 1988. And the rest is history. Since then, she has completed her doctorate in music education with minors in the fields of jazz studies at Indiana University. She is now a faculty member in the arts administration there. She talked about that along with quite a bit more. So please get to know her and dig this interview, my friends. Monica, thank you for taking a minute for Neon Jazz. I appreciate it. Thank you for calling and asking me. Absolutely. So let's dive right into She Rose. It's a great album. It's charting well. Talk to me about this release and how happy you are with how well it's doing. Well, I'm actually beyond expectations. This album has been doing so well. I'm just delighted. It's been an absolute pleasure to record with those ladies. They, um, Each one of them is masters in their own right, and they're amazing musicians. Having them do that with me was an absolute treat. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> absolutely delighted and excited to see do so well and, and have everybody latch on to it. <laughs> absolutely. So this obviously, this album is another step in your evolution as a musician. How do you view each successive album? Is it kind of an imprint in time or is it you expanding your abilities as a musician? Each one is like a snapshot in time. You know, you do projects, you get together with different people, You have new stories to tell. You have new uh, musicians to work with. So I'm not sure if it's necessarily all like a progression because it's different snapshots and times and and different projects. I mean, this one is a progression from the first one that we did with this group. But, you know, I'm doing many other projects and each one showcases a story and, and, and something. I'm looking at edit more as a snapshot in time. Cool. So talk to me about your childhood in Germany and how you got so involved in jazz. I actually just got back. I was there last week. It's a little town in the south of Germany. Something that the German school system does well is support music instruction. So I did get to study with great teachers. I did get to study actually the church organ on one of those wonderful, huge Catholic church organs. And I always loved, loved the piano and begged my parents to have one. And eventually in high school, I realized that piano playing is kind of a lonely business because you're always playing by yourself. And, you know, I thought, how can I be part of a band and do this? And there was one jazz group in town and and they were looking for a keyboard player and I dove in head first, you know, not really knowing what a 2-5 progression is or something, and went to a workshop in Cologne. It's kind of similar, like the James Abersold workshop, and and studied as hard as I could and, and worked with the band and just really fell in love with the process of, of doing this music, of interacting in the moment and being able to create and and express in the moment so i got the opportunity i loved the band i ended up marrying the guitar player in this <laughs> and taking hmm. him along to the states and i got a scholarship and we said let's buy one-way tickets we're gonna make this work <laughs> cool so that was 30 years ago exactly pretty much on the day <laughs> So let me ask you this. What jazz albums were you listening to that really got you hooked into jazz? Interesting enough, um, the first ones that I got um, hooked on was some of the early Weather Report and Chikoria albums, and then I worked backwards. (laughs) So I guess it was just a sign of the times. But I remember at that workshop in in Cologne, they were playing – the Weather Report album, they were playing Heavy Weather in a video off it, and I was completely hooked. <laughs> right on. So you went through the exchange program at the University of Alabama. I don't know that I've heard about 
their program. What was uh, what was what was good about that program? How did it help you? I ended up getting there when they had just built a brand new music building, and the teacher who was leading the big bands, Mr. Sample, he is actually a great arranger, and I got to dive into some really great composition and arranging classes. And the other good thing was, you know, to dive in and be not the small fish in the big pond, but actually get, like, support. It was more like a family. And one of the music education professors just really understood what we were doing and took a liking and helped us get, helped me get an assistantship and get the master's program. And I'm not sure that would have happened, you know, diving into a very large program to find that support that we did. So after you got your one-way ticket to the United States, was there a culture shock? Did it feel natural to come over here, or did it take some time to adjust? (laughs) Well, there were definitely some adjusting. (laughs) You know, we came, remember, we went to Alabama. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, (laughs) one thing was the language immediately. You know, there's a heavy accent, and we learned the British English in the school, so we had to listen to that for a minute. And the thing is, if you know, if you don't understand so quickly and you ask, can you, um, you know, I didn't get it, can you say it again? They'll they'll say it exactly the same way, just a little slower. (laughs) So that didn't quite help all the time. Um, The other thing is, just, you know, little convention. I remember <laughs> when everybody was saying, how are you? And you think, oh, they really, really want you to tell them right now what's going on. And you start a little speech and they're already gone, you know, realizing that it's just a way to say hello, <laughs> that uh, nobody really wants to know how you are. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, just little things like that. But, you know, and like the parties, um that there's a starting and an end time to a party. That was something new to me. You know, usually in Germany you start a party and then it goes until it ends, but you don't say it goes from six to eight. <laughs> so, But other than that, everybody was super friendly and and it was, it was a great scene. You know, in Birmingham, some of the uh, Sun Ra players were still around that have played with Sun Ra because he's from Birmingham. And... They took us under their wing and showed us things. So it, it was a great scene. Right on. Well, you've kind of climbed to that pinnacle of the educational system, getting a doctorate. What have you learned in formal education about jazz that's helped you so much? Well, I got really lucky going to IU, um, having, you know, David Baker as a mentor and having – him still in the 90s when he was was in his absolute prime teaching. And the way he taught, um, which was very individualized, and looking at a student, realizing what does the student need to know at this moment? Where is that person? What's beneficial? He he just had that gift, and and I was able to observe that. And, um, you know, and I did the book and really studied on on his method and hope that to some degree I integrated that in anything that I do, this way of empathy and when you interact with a person to see where is that person and, and what does, where should I meet him at the moment and not just have this one size fits all approach to things. And that might be one of the most important things that I learned about how to how to teach and how to interact and then of course you know a lot of the just history and theory that you can study in depth and that's the advantage of academia along with the education you've been a regular touring artist releasing albums when you started hopping on american stages and going to places like birdland how did it feel? Did it feel natural? Did it feel right? Or were you kind of bespeckled by the history of, of these places and these festivals you went to? <laughs> you know, I love performing no matter if it's a small stage, if it's a big stage, and just interacting with the audience. Of course, it's a special treat, you know, early on even if getting to play the WC Handy Festival and, and knowing that legacy and 
you know, it, it, it feels very special and, and it feels like you have some acknowledgement that your skills arrived at a certain level. But, you know, no matter what the stage, I, I always perform in a way that is the best that we can do at the moment and interact with the audience. Right now, you are also a faculty member, and you're teaching students. Talk to me about what your philosophy is on teaching students. So, you know, the interesting thing is that I ended up in the arts management program at Indiana University. So what I'm teaching about is I teach classes on the music industry and on arts entrepreneurship. And I really absolutely love doing that because, you know, I can bring what I'm doing out there on the stages when I play, when I have to create tours and new projects and figure out how to finance those projects and figure out how to make a career right back into the classroom. And then for me, it's great to interact with all these young students that a lot of them want to start their own record labels. They want to have start festivals and performing arts centers. And they feed me all this new energy and the new ideas and keep me right on top on what's going on right now, what are the directions and where are things going. So it's a great interaction. And I love those classes because they're all about how to create communities and community support. And that's so important these days. You've been really good about winning awards over the years. Downbeats recognize you. You got a Jazz Journalist Association Hero Award in 2015, commissioned our awards, NEA. But I want to ask you this. I don't want to know what your favorite award is, but what award did you get that threw you off guard that you just didn't expect? I think one of my favorites was getting recognized for my composition from Downbeat Award. And then the other very, very important one was the Jazz Hero Award where you know, people from the city where you live go ahead and, and nominate and say, you know, she's one of our jazz heroes, and that's just really special. That tells you that you did something important and, and touched people in your community. At this point in your career, you've done quite a bit. You've released a lot of albums. You've been all over the world. How do you feel about your career? Are you happy? I'm very happy the way it's it's going and, and especially the recognition for that Shearer's album, you know, it, it feels like a lot of the hard work finally comes together and and you get recognized for it. So I'm I'm really happy I'm able to do what I do. I'm able to combine the teaching and the performing and create projects. It's not easy, you know, even though it makes you happy the doing being a performer and a musician has gotten very difficult because of the financial situations. You know, there's very little income these days. You know, you can't sell any recordings anymore. You can't... Um, it, it's very difficult to put especially like a sextet on the road. In terms of that, maybe I'm not that happy <laughs> having to work that hard, but I'm, I'm happy I'm able to figure out a way to do what we do. I, the, the one thing that goes along with education and just personal experience on the stage and in the studio is people that you see live. What jazz shows have you witnessed live that have left a really big impact on you? I saw Carla Blake's big band at a festival in Austria in the, I think it was the late 80s. And it was at a time, you know, when I was an aspiring young jazz musician and seeing this lady conduct the band and sitting at the organ with her big hair and <laughs> yeah. and and writing these pieces that that was a huge impact on me because i saw something that you know looked lots more like me than most other musicians <laughs> doing what i love to do and it was just a great role model and i absolutely love her music too yeah. And then probably the other most important musician influence for me is Chikoria. You know, I just put a book out on him, but every time I saw a concert with him, it's just this level of musicality and being way beyond anything else that you know. <laughs> Absolutely. So why do you love jazz? I love it because it's one of the few art forms left that's all about the process. 
about the process of getting together and creating something in the moment. And that makes it really special to me. I just, I'm such a people person and I love to interact with people. I, I wouldn't miss it. You know, it's they, the old joke of, you know, a, what is it? A, a rock musician plays three chords for a hundred, a thousand people and a jazz musician plays a thousand chords for three people. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a lot of truth to it, you know, and that would sure. be easier avenues to take in terms of music, but I just love this interaction aspect and whatever it takes, that's, that's what I want to do. So everyone has a version of you, your family, your friends, and your fans, but you know yourself best. Who do you think you are? <laughs> that's a tough question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm just, um, I have a hugely creative mind that, you know, ideas keep popping into it all the time. I just have to do projects and work on ideas and do what I have in mind. I could, you could not stick me in a nine to eight to five job and, and say, do this thing every day the same way. I have to keep doing different things, travel, and if I can do that, I'm me, and I'm working in a happy way. Otherwise, you get me really grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Monica, thank you very much. I, I saved the, the toughest question for last. Thank you for taking some time out for Neon Jazz. <laughs> it's been an honor. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Indiana, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Monica for her time and her music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. <laughs>